Hi. Simple strategies are often disregarded because we naturally tend to believe more in complex models. So today I will present to you a very simple method following only two rules that would compete with complex trading systems and it gives positive returns. The advantage of simple rules is that they can be automated for algorithmic trading so we can easily write our strategy in Python, backtest it on different currencies just to make sure that it's really profitable. You can either use it manually if you prefer to do so, but also it's a good candidate for automated trading. And I will also explain the main challenges and the different parameters that we will need to make the best out of this. So if we consider this example, we're going to use the first indicator, which is the 200 moving average curve. So if the candles are above the curve, we are in an uptrend and we are looking for a buying position. And of course, you can apply it in the opposite direction, where if you have candlesticks below the moving average curve and you are looking for a selling position. So in this example, we are in a buying position and to choose the entry point, we are going to check where the price is dropping below the few candles that are preceding our current candle. For example, if this is our current candle, this is the lower value of the current candle, we're going to look back to the previous candles that are just before this candle of interest or our present candle. And we're going to look for the lower values of these candles. If the low value of our current candle is below all these values, then in this case, we have identified our entry point or our buying position point. Now, obviously, just like any other strategy, even though this is a simple strategy, it has its own challenges. And the first parameter is which length shall we use for the moving average? Is it 200? Is it 100? Or is it something different? But this we can guess and fine tune by backtesting our strategy on a particular currency and look for maximum returns. Then we have the number of back candles that we should be taking into account before our current candle. Shall we take 7, 8, 10 or 20 candles and compare the lowest value of our current candle to the lowest values of all these previous candles? In order not to squeeze our model into numbers, I just left it as a parameter. It's a variable in our code so we can experiment on it, we can change it and you can check the results and the returns of this strategy when you move the values of this parameter. So this was the easy part of the strategy which I call the indicator part. But any strategy should be combined with a trade management approach. So we have to know how do we define our stop loss and take profit values and these going to be related to the average true range of the market or shall we use fixed values for all our trades. So this is the hard part from my perspective because you can have the perfect indicator if you don't combine it with the correct trade management then your strategy will not give you a positive return. So again our stop loss and take profit values can be related to the ATR or they can be fixed so we will have the same stop loss and take profit values for all our trades or we can also use a trailing stop loss that can be related to the ATR. So we're going to try all of these combinations in the code and see how things will work. Even for a simple strategy or even for the simplest strategy, we can have a relatively large number of parameters to talk about. So let's check the code and see how we can write all of this in Python. Okay, so this is our Jupyter Notebook file. We have cell where we are loading the data. This is the Euro, the US dollar, four hours charts between 2003 and 2021. So this cell we have seen plenty of times. I'm not going to spend more time on it. And for this strategy, we are using the uh, exponential moving average. I'm going to use the pandas underscore technical analysis module and the function EMA. We are providing the closing values of the candles and the length here is 100. I've tried different values and for 100 we have good results for the moment. Also we need the ATR to define our stop loss or trailing stop loss values and for the ATR we have to provide the high and the low and the closing price of each of the candles and I'm taking the length equal 14 by default. We can change these later on to test its effect on the returns of our strategy. Then I will define a function called EMA sig, meaning EMA signal. And this is where I will be testing if the candles are above the curve of the uh, moving average or are below the curve of the moving average, in which case we have an uptrend or a downtrend definition. First of all, this function would take obviously the data frame of, uh, of my data. Then we have the candle, meaning the row of the current candle I'm interested in. And we have the back candle. So 
how many candles I'm going to look back to see if they are above the curve or under the curve. I'm not going to take one single candle. It doesn't make sense. I have to have at least five or six or 10 candles that are all above the curve to say that I have a clear uptrend or the opposite case where we have all the uh, pack of candles below the curve so we have a clear downtrend. So this is again a parameter that we can change and check its effect on our strategy. And this is how we can use this function. I'm calling EMA signal function. I'm providing the data frame as a parameter, the row of the candle I'm interested in, and the number of candles to take into account and check if they are above the curve or below the curve to define whether we have an uptrend or a downtrend. For an uptrend, we are returning number two as a signal. For a downtrend, we return number one. And if we don't have any clear trend, we simply return zero. At this point, I would like to uh, plot my data with the uh, exponential moving average and check how it is going so everything is working properly just to make sure that we haven't made any mistakes so far in our code. At this point, we can start using our uh, function EMA signal. So I'm defining the um, EMA back candles. So I'm taking 40 candles. If I have 40 candles above the EMA curve, so in this case, I would have an uptrend. And if I have 40 candles that are below the curve of the moving average, then we can say that we have a downtrend. For each candle in my data frame, we're calling this function, providing the data frame, the row number, and the number of EMA back candles, which is 40 in this case. Now you might argue 40 is too much. We can start with 20 or 10. You are right. Actually, it's simply a number that I threw in the code and let's see what it gives. And at this stage, our data frame looks something like this. So we have the time, the open, high, low, and close price. We have the volume. The EMA, that is now a column of our data frame, the ATR that we are going to use later on. And we have the EMA signal. So when we have signal one, it means we have a downtrend, meaning all the preceding 40 candles for all of these candles are below the EMA curve. We can try different curves also, different candles. So let's take this part and go for different values. Let's plot, for example, 300 and up to... Um, 350 candles and we still have a downtrend let's look for something else let's go 100 up to 150 and here we have an uptrend because we have number two as a signal or what we call the EMA signal the moving average signal so that was our first parameter in this strategy we still have one parameter which is which defines the entry point where we can look for a buying position or where we can look for a selling position and for this, we will need something called high low back candles. So I call this parameter or this variable like this. We're going to consider eight candles preceding the current candle or the candle of interest. We're going to add a new column to our data frame. It's the minimums called DF minimums to check for the current candle or for each row, the minimum value among the eight candles preceding the, um, the current candle or the current row. And I'm taking the lowest values for each candle. So in other words, we're checking the minimum among the lowest values for each candle preceding this particular candle or this particular row. And we're considering eight back candles. This will be the minimums column. Then the same thing for the maximums, considering the highest values for each candle. Then we can define a new function called HL or high low signal function. It will check the uh, previous signal, the EMA signal. Is it a one? So in case we have a downtrend and we are going to test if the high, meaning the highest value of the current candle is greater than the higher maximum value among the candles preceding this particular candle. In other words, does it tip above and in a downtrend, this is the definition of an entry point for a selling position. In the opposite case, when we have an uptrend, we're going to check if the low of the current candle is below all the minimums of the eight previous candles. This is where we have an entry signal for a buying position, in which case we return two. Otherwise, if we, are, if we have no entry point for a sell or a buy position, we simply return zero. So this will be our final signal. Why? Because it uses both the previous EMA signal that we have already included on, in our data frame. And it also considers the second parameter that we have talked about when we explained this strategy. 
we're going to apply this function to our data frame so we have a signal value for each row for each candle and then we can print the candles where we have only a signal one just to uh, check it out it's always better to verify things visually it's clearer for me to uh, check on the graphs and here we can see that we have a downtrend and the signals identified by our algorithm are represented by these uh, four purple points so these four candles here represent a selling signal since we are in a downtrend the thing is that when you take a position here a sell position we have to know where to put the stop loss value in order not to be touching our stop loss value and missing all of this downtrend profit that we uh, that we could make and here again we have another signal as we can see so it's also a selling signal if we want to know what is happening behind this let's check 250 so these were good signals as we can see we have a downtrend that is continuing and we can touch easily a take profit at this point and this point is also a good selling point so in other words it works very well for most of the trend time but then when we have a trend reversal it might not be as good as we think because we have a break of the trend we have a reversal and this should be identified by any trader if you are following uh, an algorithmic trading strategy and you are taking the decisions at the end meaning it's not an automated bot but rather the trader is checking this signal and uh, the signal is there to support the trader but then the final decision is always left for the trader so at this point we know our signals are working correctly and we can start testing our strategy using these signals so i'm going to define the function called signal which calls the hl signal column from the data frame and so in this strategy if the signal is equal to two i'm going to look for a buying position if the signal is equal to one i'm going to look for a selling position in this particular strategy we are using a trailing stop loss that takes into account the atr the average through range of the market we're not taking any factor it's equal to one here so the stop loss is equal exactly to the atr we can multiply it by let's say 1.5 it can be equal to uh, uh, 2.5 depending on what kind of distance would you like to have for your stop loss would you like it to be uh, very far from the current price or would you like to have a very tight stop loss depending on what your preference is so for the moment i'm going just to leave it to one so we have one less parameter to worry about using this strategy we can backtest it and we have around 29 percent in returns over all the data that we have so in total it's a positive return at the end however if you want to assess the strategy we can look at the equity it worked really good at the beginning growing up to 160 percent right at this point but then something happened and we started losing not as much as we have won but it didn't work throughout all the time of the data frame so it might be that this strategy works really good in trending markets but when you have horizontal prices or horizontal market uh, variations it might not be as good as we think and we can try to do things differently using an ATR fixed stop loss and take profits in other words our stop loss and take profit values are fixed for all the trades that we will pass using this strategy now how to define the stop loss distance and the take profit distances we're going to use two different ratios the first one is ATR underscore factor let's say it's 1.5 so we're going to uh, fix the stop loss for the buying positions as the current closing price minus the ATR value divided by this factor so in other words if I have for example factor equal 2 here it means that we're taking a stop loss distance that is equal to the ATR divided by 2 if you want to keep it as is meaning ATR factor is equal to 1 it means that the stop loss distance will be exactly equal to the ATR value without any modifications and then the take profit is related to the stop loss distance using the stop loss take profit ratio which is this factor here in other words when we put 1.5 it means that the take profit is 1.5 times the stop loss distance now when we run this strategy it provides a negative return minus 1.5% because I haven't had the time to tune the parameters and optimize all the values in order to uh, achieve a positive return however this is the way it's done I kept it here for the record you can use it in the downloaded code so you can experiment on it using maybe different data maybe uh, 
forex data or cryptocurrency data. We can also try to uh, improve our models for better return using different values for the HL back candles, for example, or even the uh, moving average value. We have used 100 EMA. You can prefer, for example, using 200 or 150, depending on which currency or which cryptocurrency you are trading with. Also, another important parameter that we uh, will not have the time to uh, optimize during this video is the EMA back candle. So I've started with 40. I tried also 30. Something that you should know is when you decrease this parameter's value, your model becomes more sensitive. You will have more trades simply because it's easier to find a lower number of back candles above or under a certain curve. So when we increase this to 50, the situation becomes harder to find because you have to find 50 candles all above or all under the curve to define a certain trend. So that's all I had to tell you about this strategy. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you found the information helpful. As usual, you can find a link in the description of the video where you can download the code. It's a Jupyter Notebook file. You can experiment and change the parameters. In the meantime, please don't forget to leave a like, drop a comment if you feel for safe trading and see you next time.